Okay, well, you're talking about a long time ago, so uh, I'm going by memory here. Homeschooling just kind of happens like housework. Um, what I meant by that is the fact that when you're around the house and you see things that need to be done, you, you just do them, you handle them. And homeschooling, I think, is very much like that. Um, you work with your children, you observe your children, and I'm a big um, advocate of observing because you can learn so much by observing children. And if you do that, what you need to do gets shown to you if, if you're open to it. Uh, just like a spill on the floor gets shown to you uh, and you know it's time to clean up the floor or do the laundry or anything else. Your, your children are your best source of uh, clues for what they need if you are aware of what they're trying to tell you. Right, right. Take your cues from the children because they're they're very innocent. They're very pure, and uh, that pureness comes through if if your mind isn't cluttered with a lot of other things going on. Uh, you know, the the electric bill needs to be paid. Dinner needs to be made. Uh, th those things can wait, but oftentimes the cues you get from your children, uh, you've, you've got an opportunity there for just a brief period of time when their attention is there or when their curiosity is peaked. So, uh, and, and it's a very simple thing to do, very simple thing to do and very helpful. Learning happens, I believe it all comes down to attention. So yes, in, in that respect, the, your child is attentive to something, you take the opportunity to run with that attention. And yes, that is exactly when learning happens. Fathers can be very involved, whether they're present all the time or not. Um, if, if you look at homeschooling, many of us start thinking that we're homeschooling because we're going to give this great education to our children. But uh, w once you get into it, you realize, and I hope people realize, that it's much more a lifestyle. So if everybody in the family is on that page, that this is our lifestyle, Dad can kind of flow in and out of that if he makes it his lifestyle as well. There, you know, Dad has to come home from work at some point. There are weekends, there are vacations. And if everyone is on the same page living that lifestyle, uh, Dad can flow in and out of it very easily, I think. <laughs> That's what I try to do. <laughs> Challenging. I, I, I can understand that. Yeah. I can understand that. And I think it's important for uh, dads to realize that they can grab the ball as well. They may not have been there all day, but when they sit down to dinner or tuck the kids into bed or before you're reading a nighttime story, uh, it's, it's a wonderful opportunity to debrief the kids as well and let them review whatever they may have learned or discovered that day. So dads can be very helpful in that respect too. I, I think um, you can focus on who the children become as opposed to what they become if your attempt at homeschooling encompasses more than just intellectual stimulation. Homeschoolers have a fantastic opportunity to address the whole child. Um, we, we are not, as human beings, just a giant intellect walking around on Earth. And unfortunately, that's where the government school system goes with schooling and their brand of education. But at home, if, if you are realizing and nurturing your child emotionally, uh, mentally, physically, as well as intellectually, uh, they are going to become, it's not that they're going to become who they are, they are going to be allowed to blossom as who they are already. And 
what they will become will depend on who they are and what brings them happiness. At least uh, that's always been my philosophy. And uh, my kids can tell you, they grew up hearing, do what you love, the money will follow. And, and they've pretty much stuck by that and they've done okay, so. <laughs> I started homeschooling in 1985. Um, I saw John Holt on the Donahue Show talking about homeschooling, and my first happened to have gone to kindergarten, and I saw horrendous changes happening in him. He had been, fortunately for me and for my family, he had been an extremely easygoing little boy, and that was disappearing, uh, and he would come home stressed and strung out from being in school. And I thought that this is never going to do. This is literally changing him. So I was fortunate that I turned the Donahue show on one day, saw John Holt. He was talking about homeschooling. And I, this is it. I can do this. You know, what does it take to teach a child to read, write, and, and do some basic math? Because I saw where that could lead to them pursuing their own education and owning their own education. So I was very fortunate that uh, Donahue invited John Holt onto his show when he did. Um, you're right, there was not a lot of support back then, but um, I, I just, I didn't care. It, this was what I wanted to do for my children. I, I reached out, I wrote letters. We used to have to write letters and put them in the mailbox and hear back weeks later from another homeschooler who, who was the closest one was about 200 miles away. Um, and it's absolutely wonderful that it has evolved to occasions like this HSC 20th anniversary conference. <laughs> that is just wild. <laughs> I have seen a lot of shifts in the homeschooling movement over the last uh, few decades. Uh, when it began, uh, we were just homeschooling. Everyone was homeschooling. So I think one of the biggest changes has been this uh, cate categorization of homeschoolers. You know, now you have unschoolers, homeschoolers, uh, Christian homeschoolers, Charlotte Mason, uh, and, and the list just goes on and on. Um, I'm still not certain if that's been a good thing for homeschooling. I, I think if uh, our numbers are still too few that we don't want to divvy ourselves up into even smaller segments. But if everybody can hang together uh, when advocacy of homeschooling in general is required, I, I think everything will be fine. Um, on the legal front, back when I started homeschooling, I, I was in the state of New York, and uh, it wasn't illegal, but there was nothing written out to make it legal either. So in most cases, it was up to the personality of the uh, uh, superintendent of the local school system to say yay or nay. Um, so that has changed, certainly. And uh, there were a few parents still going to jail back when I began homeschooling. So that has changed dramatically. Uh, I, I just uh, heard of a uh, time, I believe it was the New York Times article, that homeschooling is the new chic thing to do with the uh, rich in uh, New York City. It, it sounded more like homeschool co-ops than mom staying home and homeschooling the kids. But uh, again, that was something you wouldn't have seen 25 years ago. Either you were a fundamentalist Christian or you were a gr crunchy granola person. And uh, those were the people who homeschooled. A friend of mine has a saying that uh, today, no matter where you slice the American pie, you will see homeschoolers sticking out of it. And I think that's a really good visual for that idea. It, it has uh, jumped boundaries. And then, of course, the uh, internet was growing up and at, at about the same time as homeschooling was. And obviously, that has changed things tremendously. Um, 
my youngest was doing the, you know, those, <laughs> the really floppy, floppy disks. We uh -huh. had a couple of, <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> we had a couple of games, learning games on that, and that was our first entree into using a computer for homeschooling. But today you can uh, sit in on MIT courses uh, to gather an education. So it's, it's available. I think it makes it easier for families if, in fact, uh, there is a financial situation where parents can't necessarily be home all the time with, with the children. Um, there is just so much available out there at your fingertips, right in your house, in your pajamas. <laughs> That's great. <laughs>I think everybody is homeschooling. It's just a question of what lessons are you teaching your child? Uh, you know, someone who has made a conscious decision to homeschool is very aware of the lessons that are being put forth. But every parent is providing lessons to their children. And, you know, sometimes they're good, sometimes they're not. Uh, I found uh, it, it was difficult for my family to homeschool. I, we, we did without a lot of things. But uh, if, if you prioritize what's important in life, and if that comes out on top, just like anything else, you do what's necessary to accomplish that top priority. So, uh, yeah, I would say yes, everybody is already homeschooling. It's a question of how much attention they're paying to it. It's possible but it, uh, for a single parent to homeschool, but it would certainly be more challenging. And I think it's much more important for that person to gather up a very strong support group, uh, have other people who are willing to take over some of the actual, whether it's taking the child to field trips or classes or sitting at the computer with them, whatever is necessary. Um, but uh, it, it, there are single parents out there doing it, and there are support groups on the internet, on Yahoo groups and, and whatnot, to uh, help them out. And I, I would certainly, if any single parent would like to get in touch with me and feel like they've got a, a mother or a grandmother or aunt <laughs> sitting by your side, I'd be more than happy to do that for her because it, it, it's important. And I, I don't think, I, I think it's a shame that the economy would dictate that for a family, if in fact that is what the family desires and, and uh, you know, a child has expressed interest in homeschooling, which I hear tell of much more often than I used to. Children are coming home and saying, please homeschool me, I don't want to go back to school. And I shudder to think of what that child is experiencing in the government school system to be to the point where they say, please, mom, please do this with me. Right, right. I, I think community is important to education. I, when I look back on uh, homeschooling my own children, yes, I did it. Yes, I was the one in the house all day. I was the one who f forewent an income. But uh, my, my children were out and about in the community, and I utilized all of that. And, and it would be silly not to. Uh, a lot of people today could have someone living right next door who may be a retired accountant who would be wonderful to help all the kids with their math, or someone who you know, is a veteran of a war. We have a lot of experience and intelligence and wisdom out there. And that segment of the population often feels uh, neglected or shoved aside. And uh, my, my vision would be, yes, uh, utilize the whole community. And uh, it, it would be very, very healthy for neighborhoods, for the children, and for the people who uh, help the kids. I uh, made a point of writing a letter to the editor when my last child was done with homeschooling. I figure you're never done learning, but theoretically done with homeschooling. And literally thanked my community for helping me educate my children. And uh, it, it was heartfelt. I, they really were 
humongous help. Oh boy. <laughs> that's a big question. <laughs> oh yes, that certainly is. Yes, I believe to an extent schools could be informed by what the homeschooling practitioners are learning. The question is, can a system, can an institution put that into practice? I don't think so. Um, because I think one of the greatest gifts that homeschooling is giving all these children is an individualized education. And it, it's, it's bringing out their individuality on purpose. I mean, you know, the parents are focused on that. Opposed to that is the system where it's as if that individuality is trying to be trained out of people and trying to fit everybody into, into the same peg. Uh, John Holt, many, many years ago, gave up on trying to reform the school system. And I kind of fall into that camp with John. I don't think it can be reformed. I think it would need to be scraped and start it all over again. Tear it down. <laughs> Tear it down and begin again, because there's a big difference between schooling and education. And people use those two words interchangeably all the time. And uh, in, in fact, in one of my workshops, I tell parents, make a concerted effort to separate those two things in your mind. And it will help you a lot in seeing the difference between schooling and education. The word uh, educate c comes from the Latin, and it means to lead out. And homeschoolers are doing that. They are doing that all across the country and in other places in the world. Do schools do that? I don't think so. And, and that's where they go wrong right from the starting gate. So I think that's why John Holt felt they could not be reformed, because they're coming from the wrong place right at the get-go. Well, there's an assumption that schooling is providing an education, and that's not necessarily so. And then there's also the falsehood that schooling is needed to receive an education. And, uh, you know, Mark Twain said, I never let school interfere with my education. And that sums it up brilliantly. <laughs> I, I actually started doing school at home. I'm the first to admit that. Um, I was very, very concerned. <laughs> I'm a worry wart. Uh, you know, my thought was, well, if I get run over by a bus tomorrow and these kids have to go back to school, I want them to at least be somewhere close to the same page as their uh, age counterparts. Uh, but I quickly learned that I burned out on that, honestly. Uh, even before the kids did. It was just so much hassle, so much work. Um, so what I, what I wound up doing was taking the school's curriculum and just getting a general overview of, of what the kids were doing, and that got me away from a curriculum. I, I never did use a curriculum in a box or anything like that. Uh, and I relaxed and my kids relaxed, and we, we kind of wound up more on the side of unschooling as time went along. When I wrote one of my books, uh, I did a uh, survey of, uh, it, it was not a whole lot of homeschoolers, probably a couple of hundred, and I asked them questions like this, and the vast majority of them, if, if you put everything on a continuum, and say school at home was one end and unschooling was at the other end, uh, the vast majority of them got more relaxed, not less relaxed. And I think that comes with, um, you know, realizing we can do this, you know, the kids aren't growing a second head, and, uh, you know, if, if they do happen to have to take a test, which mine did because we lived in New York, uh, hey, they're doing okay, we're doing okay. And you, you get more self-confidence. I, I think our own schooling, in many respects, 
did a whole lot of damage to our self-confidence and uh, and that's what I try to tell people when they look at me and say but you know I'm not a teacher I couldn't possibly do that with my children and uh, sometimes they just need some encouragement and a little rebuilding of that self-confidence that was destroyed prior to even them realizing that's what was happening to them. I think unschooling definitely fits with the idea of organic learning and uh, I think today's parents are benefiting a lot from what the parents, the homeschoolers did prior to them that got them to this point where they realized they don't need all that curriculum and that life is a wonderful teacher. Um, there's just so many things kids who are sitting in school miss on a day-to-day -day basis. It, it just, uh, it blows me away that after all these years, there's still the question, what about socialization? What happens when they get out in the real world? And, you know, you just, they never left the real world, so they're not going to have a problem. It's the kids who have been sitting in an institution uh, for 16, 17, 18 years, however many years we, we trapped them in there that are going to have the problem. And I, when I first went out into the work world, I, I saw I was having a problem. You know, suddenly I was thrown in with all these adults who expected me to do things and there was nobody standing there telling me, well, okay, today's Monday, so you're going to do this, 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 and this. <laughs> So uh, I, was, I was very cognizant of that at the time I was teaching my kids, and I wanted to introduce them, never take them out of the real world. Mm -hmm. And that is really a blessing of homeschooling. There's absolutely no question. And I'm glad these parents have learned from those who went before them, because I think it's helping the homeschooling movement grow. I think it's helping to relax the homeschooling movement. I think it's getting a lot more media attention, which of course will gain more homeschoolers as, as time goes on. And with the fact that the, the American public school system seems to be bending over backwards to uh, implode itself, uh, I think a lot more parents are saying, boy, this isn't working we've got to do something different and it's wonderful that homeschooling is now so readily available to them uh, they probably just need to walk down the street and and find a homeschooler or certainly go to their local library and learn about how many are around to uh, help them out This is not to say that people who don't homeschool don't have warm, close relationships with their children, but I think homeschooling greatly increases the odds that, uh, that you will build a solid relationship as a family. As I said, if you're living a homeschooling lifestyle, you're all in this together, and uh, that really does something to the family dynamic, um, that everybody knows they're on the same team. Too often, uh, when kids go off to age-segregated school, uh, you know, one brother's too old to be hanging around with, the baby sister's too young to be hanging around with, and all of that comes home, all, all of that kind of thinking. And homeschoolers get to skip all of that. Um, and the other important thing that I think I have seen come out of homeschooling with many, many families is the fact that these children blossom into who they are meant to be. They are the individuals uh, that they were just born to be. Um, I, I think when you, when you have two children, at least, if not more, you realize, let me back up here a little bit, when you have a child, you say, okay, now I've had a baby. I know all about what babies are like. Babies are just like my little Johnny. And then you have the second child. And you say, oh my goodness, <laughs> you know, little Sally is nothing like little Johnny. And there's uh, an appreciation that they are individuals right, right from the get-go. And homeschooling does everything to um, 
complement that to help them be who they are. Now, I know some people watching this will probably be saying, well, yeah, you know, your child may be good at this, and if that's all he does, what about his weak points? Uh, this is not to say that you ignore the weak points, but there's a lot of happiness to be derived with these children who are growing up to be who they are meant to be, and nobody intervening and trying to make them into something that they aren't, or even worse, trying to make them like everybody else who is around them. Uh, it, it's, it's a gift that I, I think eventually can change the world. I'm convinced of that. Uh, we, j we just need enough happy people who are content with who they are doing what they love. I think that early blooming is what we see in some of these homeschool kids who seem very mature for their age. Uh, they, they've skipped all that wasted time and, and nonsense of studying things or pseudo-studying things that they are never going to use again. And, and again, there are critics of homeschooling who say, well, how do you know you're not going to use algebra or trigonometry or whatever down the road? Um, I, I saw things that my first grade teacher wrote about my linguistic skills. And I always felt that, that, you know, I enjoyed reading, I enjoyed the English language, I enjoyed diagramming sentences, if you can believe that. <laughs> but I, there's an internal voice telling, was telling me that uh, you, you're never going to be a mathematician, you're never going to be an engineer, you're never going to take a job where you have to do that, in large part because you don't like it. So, uh, I, yes, these kids definitely are on the fast track in, in growing up. And uh, bully for them. <laughs> Good for them. <laughs> right. Homeschoolers have learned how to learn. And if, if that was all they got out of their time spent homeschooling, they're, they're way ahead of the curve. Um, you know, it's, it's like someone has a saying about uh, when you get a package of flower seeds, you don't know what you're going to get. You don't force them to grow. You don't treat them all the same. You know, some need to be in the shade, some need to be in the sun, and uh, it, it doesn't come with any guarantees. Well, our children are very similar in, the, in that respect, but we can just do our best and be good gardeners and say, boy, you look a little droopy in the sun today. You know, let's put you in the shade for a little while. And again, that's something that that kind of individual attention just isn't available in the way the school system is set up. Uh, you, you know, even, even beyond the fact that it was set up based on a Prussian system of getting people to uh, step in line and answer to bells and whistles and move when they're supposed to and not question authority, uh, the, the problems with schooling even go beyond that. <laughs> there are definitely people who are afraid to buck the system. Um, it, it's been drummed into them for a certain amount of time. The bigger question uh, and, and the wonder to me is that we've got so many people who are willing to buck the system <laughs> and thank goodness for that. Uh, as I said, I've watched the homeschooling movement grow. I, I think when I started they figured there were 10,000 of us and now there are probably over 2 million uh, homeschooling. So. That's, I mean, it was over a long period of time, a couple of decades, but uh, it's, it's saying something. And I believe the more there are out there, the less it will seem like it's bucking the system. And there will be more and more success stories, and there will be more and more neighbors like you who are showing that it's, it's not a bad thing. These kids are turning out okay. Uh, and maybe not even just okay, maybe they're excelling. Uh, anything different is, is frightening to people. But um, 
I, I think when it comes down to if you're thinking in terms of what's best for your child, uh, you, you definitely have to at least consider homeschooling um, be, because the benefits are, are just tremendous. I, I, I could sit here all day and talk about the benefits of homeschooling. Um, they, they just uh, cover such a wide range of life for children, whether it's the socialization and they become comfortable around little children and adults much sooner than uh, kids in school typically do. That's not to say all kids in school are like that, but um, my observation has been they're a lot more comfortable in a wider social situation than uh, kids who attend school. Homeschooling is also a viable way to live your life as a family, uh, per particularly in today's society with all the problems that are going on. Uh, a lot of our young people don't have anything to, to grab onto if, um, you know, if both parents are working, and, and I realize that's a necessity today, uh, they go off to school, nobody there cares about them the way their parents can care about them, even, even the best teachers in the world. And, and so there, there's nothing that is stable, there's nothing that is a, a touchstone, I guess you would call it. Um, you, know, you know, a place that you call home where you're safe being yourself. And that's a gift that homeschoolers are giving to these children. Uh, if, if people are on the fence about homeschooling, I would highly recommend that they talk to homeschoolers, that they attend, that they seek out and attend some homeschool support groups, that they may even ask to hang out with a homeschooling family for a couple few days as they go through their paces. And uh, then, then they would get a much truer picture of homeschooling than they may be getting from sensational media coverage of, of the fact. Um, I, I was just talking to an old friend here. I caught up with her after a lot of years. And uh, we, we were right into talking about all the problems that are out there that, that we see and that we're trying to address. And we, and we realized, you know, we were talking about this 15 years ago, and we're still talking about the same thing. <laughs> so I don't know what that critical mass is going to have to be. If two million isn't enough, uh, how many homeschoolers are enough? Uh, it, that's impossible to answer. But I think we have, well, we've got a generation of homeschoolers who are adults now, like, like my kids and uh, they're going out and they are homeschooling another generation. So it's not only has the planting spread, it's also going deeper. And that's all I can do at this point. Um, you, you know, I, I have the blog, Parent at the Helm, where my purpose is to get this information to people who are on the fence. You know, here is the news about public schools, and, and it's not good news, whether it's budget shortages, whether it's teachers needing to be laid off, whether, whether it's school violence, whether it's web cameras in school dispensed computers, this is not a pretty picture, and there is something you can do about it. And then, you know, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make them drink. And you as homeschoolers today, you know, just be a good example for, for what it is out there. Uh, you know, preach the message to anybody who's going to listen. <laughs> and keep being a good example. Um, I, I think it makes all the sense in the world not to begin school until children are at least seven, eight years old. And in fact, that was Thomas Jefferson's thought when, when he first started. He figured that 
schooling was a responsibility of the state to provide it, but not against the will of the father. So in other words, it wasn't there for coercion. It was there as a resource, just as we look as a lot at a library as a resource. And certainly children who are you know, up to the age of seven, they're, they don't even, their brains aren't wired to think in the abstract yet. So setting them down, it, it's almost as if we're setting them down for failure because we're act, asking them to do something that brains that are still in the concrete that are meant to naturally be in a, I, I always called it a collection phase. They're just collecting information. They haven't the foggiest idea what to do with it yet. But it, 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 they've got all those files there so that when, uh, you know, further skills such as abstract thinking kick in, they've got the information there and then they learn how to sort it and put it in the right places in the filing cabinet. In other words, they've got something to work with so those brain synapses can, can connect. Uh, so Finland, uh, if, if America had to uh, follow anybody else, that's certainly a better model than the Prussian model that we've got going now. <laughs> Well, the other thing now, I mean, people are writing books and talking about the fact that, um, you, you know, what's up with this extended adolescence that we've got going on? You, you know, that uh, kids are children until they're 25 now. When, when you think back uh, even to the early years of this country, when kids were 10, 11, 12 years old, they were pulling adult duty and uh, well. They knew how to do it. So, uh, you know, teens, I, I think they'd be much better off if they were out uh, apprenticing, if they were out volunteering in the community, uh, again, following what they would like to do. Uh, you know, John Gatto, who, who was another um, strong homeschooling proponent, he's, you know, why do we have kids listening to the reading of poetry when they want to build buildings and vice versa? You know, it, ju it just doesn't make any sense. And certainly, if we gave teens the responsibility that comes along with apprenticeships and volunteering and being out in that real world instead of located in an institution away from it, I, I think they would surprise people. They, they would take on a lot more responsibility and grow up a lot quicker and be ready for college faster. <laughs>I wrote a piece once, it was, it was called A Midsummer Night's Dream When the School Doors Close. And it, it was kind of a vision of, you know, the entirety, what would happen if one day all the school doors closed? Um, you know, the community would have to kick in. It, it would have to kick in. Uh, parents would be scrambling for, oh my gosh, I've got to go to work, where is my kid going to go? they would be forced to go out and grab that community that I was talking about before. They, they, you know, the, the community that is kind of silent because everybody's involved in their own little merry-go-round. Um, I, I think a lot more of the community would be drawn in. I think a lot more people would have to get involved. I think you could have resource centers that were local on a local level, and I think in this article I even took whatever the federal budget spent on schooling was and figured out, and this again was years and years ago, it would be something like $765,000. You could have thousands of these places all around. Um, you know, downtown buildings, you would make it convenient. Uh, for places for the kids to get to or for the parents to drop these kids off at. Um, you could have a free bus system with the buses that wouldn't be being used by the schools to get the kids back and forth and get them to apprenticeships and volunteer opportunities. Um, so, you know, the vision is out there uh, and, and maybe it will take the school doors closing to get everybody to say, okay, 
you know, that we're, that we're, we're just spending so much money on this schooling that is producing graduates who can't read. Maybe we ought to close the doors. Maybe we ought to utilize more computers. And uh, for heaven's sake, save the libraries. I mean, they're one of our last bastions, and they're in trouble now, too. And uh, these are places that kids can go to and uh, learn on their own and be self-educated and self-responsible. So it, it was a vision. <laughs> Well, thank okay, thank you. Thank you. Am I going to see you around? Yes, we'll be here for the remainder of the week.